So hi, this is uh, Will McGregor, director of the Rome 2 Total War trailer. And Adam Etherington, I was the director of photography. Watching now is the, the first day shoot actually, which was the uh, Centurion scene where we had uh, two brothers, one betraying the other. Cool, so I guess what we can see here is is in the first day in this in this battalion scene there was a uh, it was quite an expansive set with an, an awful lot of uh, sort of logistical concerns um, that we had to take into account there was an awful I mean there was sort of 30 40 extras plus all the principal cast I think we had about 150 people there on the day yeah. I guess one of the great things about it is also one of the tough things about it it, it was so large I mean it g gave us a lot of depth we could really build people further and further back you know we've got this the, the environment is basically one long kind of road and then behind that through the through this archway you know the environment goes even further back um, which is a lot to light and a lot to fill but once it's once it's all there you really get depth yeah and we did want to try and create that sense of a greater world surrounding the the characters so it wasn't it wasn't a sort of a too small or intimate as a scene it was uh, it was something that really had a sense of being part of a, a greater entity and a greater environment yeah, I mean, de definitely you want to get those emotional moments and get in close and really be with your characters, but you want to set them in an epic landscape. And I think that's one of the hardest things to achieve is to really show that scale, and make the world believable. Uh, I guess with with that scale came the challenges, uh, technically, certainly from, from my perspective, and then also in turn from, from Will's, just being able to, to sort of accommodate the sheer logistics of, of creating a world of that scale um, and we had quite a significant crew um, that were with us on the day we used a lot of uh, we used a lot of uh, special effects such as ash and, and fire effects um, I know we had quite a big quite a significant special effects department there that were working sort of throughout the day before and then working non-stop throughout the night as we were shooting to to create that world and to create the, the sort of um, natural atmosphere that that really helped to set the scene. Mm -hmm. And it's it very important that every, all of our three scenes had a very different feel. I wanted them to flow together, for there to be a rhythm, for all these betrayals to be kind of connected in the architecture of Rome, but yet you have to recognise them as their own scenes, it can get disorientating. So you have very strong visual elements, be it the fire and the ash and the smoke in here, the sun and the pollen, uh, which is where when you're into the Senate scene, and in the bedroom again a very different feel and um, that was very important and that was something that we spent an awful lot of time focusing on and preparing before the shoot i know will had very clear references and very definitive ideas how we wanted each space to to look and feel in terms of the color palettes i mean if you look look at the three different environments there's obviously very very definitive and clear differences in in color and texture and tone and we really wanted those to reflect the stories that uh, and the characters that were, were in those stories Actually, it's a bit hot, but you can try. Oh, yeah, so it's working. You see, it's working, yes. Yeah, it's comfortable. <laughs> but the leather, the leather stuff is not. All the time is tiny. Yes, it has, it has ah. the paint over, over here, around me, somewhere. Look at, look at, my, look at my, my fingers there, down there, oh, it's, on it's, my legs. It's dirty, yeah. dirty stuff. It's so, much, so much dirty, you can see it. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't and when, the, we have, when we have some fight together, sometimes some, somebody just Put your put his uh, his feet uh, yeah, on yeah, yours. Yeah, over there. Yeah, it's like ow. So actually, yeah, we are soldiers. That's why, no? It's looks mad. <laughs> Thank you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kill him and come back. Yeah. No, 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 like this, like this. Come on, hop. Oh, oh, oh shit. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Uh, an important part of kind of getting these guys ready uh, in terms of costume isn't just sort of putting the costume on. Is getting them really dirty and kind of grimed up, getting that makeup in there. Uh, just, just to add that extra kind of texture, that dirt and that realism. We shot out in uh, in Budapest. Um, we ended up in Hungary. I know for for a number of reasons. Um, yeah, I mean, actually, there was a few, but one of the best things for me uh, was actually the casting. I think there's just such a look of person that when you put them in these films and the, the performance they give, they really add to the world. I think that's an important part, the kind of landscape of people's faces as well as the sort of landscape around you. As you can see, there's an interesting face there. And then we've also got Ben, who we've brought out, who's the editor. So he's been out here working, editing as we shoot the film, which is so great to be able to bring him with us, makes the 
filming process from day to day a lot easier and you know what you've already shot and you can look back at it. We started shooting on Friday um, and since then we have been putting shots in and assessing it whereas before I would have got the rushes in London and probably only had three days to sort of get it all together so it's a tight deadline but me being here has allowed us to get the momentum and the wheel going effectively. The style of the film is this a montage which really flows and there's momentum, a kinetic energy from one shot to another a lot of which is planned. So you have certain movements, certain movements of the camera, certain kind of choreography that all comes together. Um, and obviously you need to know that's working, so you have an editor to do that. But an additional thing has actually been, you get more ideas from it. So you, you, you cut together the first day, and it informs the second day. Um, and that means that you kind of really can tailor every day with your editor, and you know, improve your shot list as you go. We shot on a camera called the Arri Alexa, which is it's sort of leading the forefront um, in in terms of digital image acquisition. It's been used on on sort of a fair portion of the sort of upcoming and new new release blockbusters that are out there. Um, and we wanted to work with digital image acquisition rather than with film. Um, I guess the kind of the hyper real kind of fantastical feel of the film, um, also getting that those details and that texture, definitely for me is a great format for the look we wanted to achieve. We're gonna go now, guys. It's no good when the sun's up. Uh, Ash, please. One of the additional details, kind of extra depth to the, the story that we wanted to use, is that these two soldiers here are actually twins. And it's not something that everyone gets. You know, the important thing is you get this idea of betrayal. However, this depth going to the fact that we're echoing kind of Romulus and Remus story here of these two twins. It was a nice added detail trying to suggest, you know, the, the game goes beyond what you're seeing here or, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wider world that you're playing within. And that, that was another thing as well, working with the extras, kind of positioning them. I know for obviously um, composition, obviously very much related to what you're doing. Absolutely. I think that's one, one of the things that it's easy to forget is everyone that's, everyone that's within uh, that frame. Everybody spent an awful lot of time... Uh, thinking about who's going to be standing where, where and how, how that sort of provides the best composition for the image. I mean, you can see that in the wides, and particularly in the sort of the mid-wider uh, shots. We we did spend a lot of time carefully constructing that image, and and often we'd sort of um, you know we'd try try a few options to see what was the the most effective way to to get the sort of characters. Yeah, and in in a sense, you can plan a lot of things, but until you see you know 50 extras in your frame and then all of a sudden you go okay I can't see anything there's no depth there there's just lots of people and you just keep pushing them back and pushing them back and giving people different starting positions and changing their timing until you get that that you hit the sweet spot with the choreography with the movement of the camera and the people and all the ash and all the smoke is working together that's it and it's a process but yeah it's part and parcel this scene now between our ginger assassin and our rather affluent male character um, offered very very different challenges really in, in terms of a, a very intimate scene there's something actually a, which are quite difficult to direct this shoot uh, gave us is a bit more flexibility we weren't so locked in with these huge sort of car, this huge amount of like extras um, and it just meant that we could move around and find extra shots. It's a very creative project with a lot of freedom. You don't often get to work on a long format piece that is, you know, you're normally trying to tell a story in 30 seconds that's often got several scenes, whereas here we can play out each little story. I actually think a lot of value comes through just the way you photograph things on a simple, basic level, almost just the principles of how you film something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we kept things very simple, that's one thing, I mean, the, the references that uh, Will brought up, we, we did spend an awful lot of time looking over looking over those and, and seeing what worked, and it, it was very simple techniques, and very simple uh, sort of palettes and schemes that, that, that worked most effectively. So Will, Will spent an awful lot of time working with the production designer to select yeah, I mean, the right fabric. Yeah, I mean, it's how you create, compose an image with colour. If you're telling three stories at once, although they are connected by an overall theme, you don't want to disorientate your view, and it's just a simple way of separating these worlds. To design the woman dress, we had uh, different options for her, and I love to work with the uh, silk, very, very thin uh, silk material, 
and she was really beautiful, so she, she helped me a lot on the fitting. And uh, we had different options also for the earrings, necklaces, and I worked together with a, a very good uh, Hungarian uh, jewelry maker. In terms of photographing our lady, we really wanted to try and uh, be as sort of as complementary and as positive to her as we could. So we we used a lot of fabrics. We shot through a lot of muslin and silk. Um, it's an old technique that used to be used an awful lot um, back in sort of fifties to flatter a lady's skin tone. So we we actually built muslin into our into our set design and into our environment in order to to play on that technique to soften the image. Um, that's one thing with with shooting digital. It can be a little bit hard at times. So we we did try to try to accommodate for that. Yeah, and I think it was very consistent as well in terms of how we approached every image in terms of having textures, having depth. It's never better than when you're seeing something in a context which isn't just straight up in front of you. You want you want to put it in its own world and 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 creating these layers really I think helped that. Yeah, and it did it did help to to create depth to the environment and one th one sort of challenge that you always have when you're shooting close up in intimate work where within the bed of relatively confined spaces is being able to, to create depth in the world around your characters. We did try to use fabrics and, and also light provided mm. by the sort of fire effects that we had in the background to really build that depth into the, into the space and the environment. So we're moving on to this setup here now, which is the partition. This scene here, this is what we've just shot now. So I'm just starting to sort of just see how it fits in the edit, just getting performance, movements. But we had a what we call like a storyboard edit. Now, this is all sort of hand drawings, and what this allows us to do is to basically just start to sort of put the edit together in picture sense. It's very cumbersome and very rough, obviously, um, but what it does, it, it, it sort of just gives a it's a structure so we can foresee that. You know, CA, they know what they've got to do in, in delivering Rome 2, but we wanted to do their vision justice with what we were making. We wanted to get across all the details that they spoke to us about, the kind of exciting things that will be going on in Rome 2. We wanted to convey that in this film. I think that's something, although, you know, you, you want to show game footage and people want to see game footage, that you can do with a live action trailer is you can make it more conceptual and more about what it is you're trying to achieve on a kind of, on a, on a thematic level, you know, to tell a satisfying story with where you feel that you know, the audience feels that they are not missing anything, but yet suggest that there's this greater landscape. You know, we had to, you know, in two and a half minutes, summarise everything that Rome 2 is going to do as a game, or at least try and suggest it. Everybody wanted was to try and use as much sort of, of reality as we could and try and create as much of the world um, for, for real, um, and then use it, use the CGI here and there to enhance that. Um, this this sort of uh, this final day and this final sort of this final scene with, with the young politician um, betraying his his elder that that was where the CGI was really important to be able to help extend the environment and, uh, and sort of create the idea of Rome. Mm. And I, you know, it's difficult because you're seeing a Roman city. You know, it's a map painting. It doesn't matter how good it is. But one of the things we really tried to do is get people into the film before we showed them these wides, before we went to town. You know, didn't want to open on these grand wides, which is you know. It's tempting to do, but just felt that if you were in the film, if you'd experienced it and you got into the story, then by the time these big map paintings come up, you're not gonna notice them as map paintings. You're in the story; they're just extending the world you're seeing. And I guess you can see in the background there, sort of, we, we were right in the middle of uh, the Budapest city centre, um, so there was uh, there was an awful lot of uh, of modern architecture and. Uh, cars and everything around in the background so it was very much a case of trying to select our trying to sort of select the way we were shooting select our angles to really play to to what um what we could sort of pass off as being um uh, what we can make authentic and make feel authentic mm. um I and mean, you can see in the background of some of this there's, there's some very large green screens which we had to use to um to remove that background and that was then replaced later with matte paintings that were done by the vfx team here in london I mean, the great thing as well, you have this replacement and this extension, which you always plan to do, but there are things which, if you don't like, or if, if you feel there's an issue with which you can improve, and that's not in any way fixing it in post, but just pushing things that, you know, that little bit further. For example, 
the shot where the um, older Senna is grabbed, he gives a fantastic performance in the take we used, and that was by far my favourite performance for him. Um, however, one of the guys who grabs him, there was just a better take for him. So you had one take of the um, soldier and one take of the senator put together, so you combined both of their best performances. We are enhancing the whole of the background to put the Roman Forum into the background of all of our green screen plates. When we get back to the office, we'll try and recreate Rome in a very basic 3D stage um, that will give us our depth and it will allow the director to compose his shot, just get a really nice composition. And once we have that and we apply the, the final matte painting, we'll track it into the shot, potentially reproject it back onto 3D objects if there's any movement or parallax that's needed for these shots. It's the last shot of the film and it was obviously planned to come up over the bed, it goes to black and then the doors open from black and this guy's pulled over the top of you. That's planned. On the day, you see him being dragged through and we're like, well, why doesn't he like send his robe over the top of the camera? You know, you'll get this great movement in front of the lens. And it just adds so much dynamism. So that's a bit of inspiration on the day. And just this cloak goes over the camera and it just opens up and it perfectly frames the young senator staring at him being dragged away just before it closes up again and then you reveal him. And I think that's just one of the things really, is this natural variation as much as preparation.